Have at it. Go. Go for it. Just wham on it. <laughs> <laughs> There's your blooper. <laughs> Pick it back up. Keep going. <laughs> Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about why recently made, within like the last three or four years, wireless routers seem to work fine, but then just die. If you look online, you just look for dead wireless router, there's been a massive upsurge of these happening within like the last three to four, maybe five years or so. And there's one thing in common. For instance, this Netgear Nighthawk X4S. I had this for a year. I bought this uh, refurbed off of Amazon, probably for like about $179. And it worked beautifully for a year. And then one day I woke up in the morning and I didn't have any internet. The WAN port wasn't working. The ethernet ports weren't working. And the Wi-Fi didn't want to connect. So it was completely wonked out, had no clue what happened tried resetting it five times and it wouldn't come back. So I finally said, screw it, get rid of it. And I bought this. And yes, it's already been modified, but we'll explain that in a second. So this is an Asus, what is it? Du -du -du. Wireless AC3100, there's a different model number. For, oh, there we go. It's an Asus RTAC88U. And this is technically a step up from the X4S. And this worked great for about two months. And all of a sudden, yeah, it did the exact same thing. I woke up one morning, the WAM port wasn't working. None of the eight ports, this one actually has eight ethernet ports off the back of it instead of the standard four that you can see on most wireless routers. And that wasn't working and the wireless, yeah, that was pretty much crapped out too. So. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with it, and I had to go to work that day. It didn't happen on a weekend, so I ended up just shutting the router off and came back later after work, about eight hours later, tried to turn it back on, uh, do a hard reset on it before I even did anything. I just did a hard reset on it, turned it back on, and I was able to reconfigure it, and it started working again. I'm like, what the heck was this? So I finally figured out what the problem was. It's heat. Even though I had this in an open wall area. It wasn't confined in my entertainment center. There was plenty of ability for it to naturally have air convection through it. The unit overheated. And that is what is killing wireless routers. Five to 10 years ago, they didn't need that much power. They didn't really have a fast processor in here. Now they have dual core ARM processors in here. You only had the 2.4 gigahertz radio. You didn't also have a five gigahertz radio. And you weren't running two or three or four different bands simultaneously. So these actually do use a fair amount of power compared to the old ones. And they actually are heat synced internally. Most manufacturers heat sync it. But the one thing they forget to do is do some sort of active cooling. It doesn't need to be much. These things only consume 5 to 10 watts. But that heat builds up in these containers, in these cases. And eventually overheats the units. Hence, once this one died, and it came back a little bit here and there, uh, I decided, okay, I grabbed an old 80 millimeter fan, cut a hole in the top of it, because I didn't really care about the warranty, and it worked good for about another month and a half. But unfortunately, the damage was already done. Uh, again, probably within about a month and a half, it did the same thing with the fan running. So, the lesson here to be learned is you have two options, and I'll show you both of them. One of them is right in front of you right now. Before your unit starts acting weird, because once it starts acting weird, damage has already been done to the CPU or the silicon, whatever's in here. Uh, maybe it's just a bad capacitor. I can't troubleshoot that much. That's just insane. I'm not going through that. It's not worth my time. So you need active cooling, whether it be put a fan on top like I did or get a laptop pad, because most of these do have, if I get these antennas out of the way, they do have open louvers on the bottom, which then goes off to the side, and air is supposed to convect through. But if you can at least put a laptop pad on the bottom of these and get some airflow going through them, it will help. Whereas in the case of this 
um, Asus router, I was using a custom firmware on it, which actually shows the temperature in here. With the fan off, this unit would routinely hit 180 degrees Fahrenheit. That's absolutely insane for something that only pulls 7 to 10 watts, roughly. So, when I put this fan onto it, and this is a 12 volt, 80 millimeter fan, was originally a three wire fan, and I just cut off the tack wire and ran it to five volt USB. So, it's technically under clocked for a fan. It's only got five volts, but it spins perfectly fine. And my average temperatures went from 180 degrees down to about 110 to 115, depending upon how hard I was working it at that time. So that is the easiest way to fix this problem if you want to stay with a normal consumer router. Now your other option, so the other way you can handle this if you don't want to keep messing with consumer routers, because I'm done with them, forget it. It's just not worth it. For a 50 cent fan, not being installed into a modern unit, it's just, it's beyond oversight. It's just negligence on the fact of everyone who makes routers. So, and the thing is, it's completely made out of plastic. So, what I end up doing is going for enterprise rated gear. And the easiest way to get into that without having too much of a headache is Ubiquity, their Unify line. And that's what I end up using. Here's their gateway. Again, there's no fan on it, but the big difference is it has a lot more breathing, air breathing area, and the damn thing is made out of metal, not plastic. So it can conduct the heat out a lot better. So you do definitely get a step up in quality, whether it be hardware and software. So I got that. I got the eight port switch. And I also have the Unify AC Pro Wi-Fi access point. And I have this mounted on the side of my entertainment center, right on the first floor. And I can get beautiful signal from this all the way up to the second floor, even on five gigahertz. So going through the floor, no problem. And again, going down to the basement, no problem. With both of those routers that I'm about ready to take a sledgehammer to. Yeah, they would work. 2.4 would go through the floor and the ceiling fairly well. 5 gigahertz, not nah, forget it, not really happening. This has no problem, and it's a, it's not like it's their extended range or their really high power. This is their regular mainstream wireless AP. So that's the other way I went. So that's basically my conclusion as to why consumer wireless routers keep dying. They're overheating. Put a little bit of active cooling in it, whichever way you want to do it, and it will last a lot longer. Or, act like me, finally get fed up with messing with consumer routers and go enterprise. I could have spent three to $400 on another high-end gaming router, brand new, or I spent just shy of $400 for these three units that I just showed you. They also have a cloud key that goes with it. It's basically like a little ARM processor that runs all these and manages them that you're supposed to plug into here or since I already have a home server set up running Plex and everything else, you can run their free software and that will manage it. And that's what I did. I saved a hundred dollars. So this is just a quick informational video. There wasn't really anything going on except for maybe at the end of the video. I don't know. Maybe I'll still do something, but if you like this video, thumbs up, please. If you didn't like it, thumbs down questions or comments down below in the comments, please. And I'll see you next video. He's not very strong. <laughs> it looks like a sick crab trying to fall off. <laughs> it just bounces off every time. Yeah, go for it. There we go. <laughs> oh, there we go. I think there's something. <laughs> You're next. I think I was an antenna. <laughs> oh, that's wood. That was still wood.